Hey everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Imperial Settlers Roll and Write, and this is designed by Ignazi Shevichek, and it is published by Portal Games. You guys, we love Imperial Settlers, and we are slowly warming up to Roll and Write games. So, when we, we heard- We did a top 10 Roll and Write. What, what do you mean slowly warming up? Well, it was in the top 50. I don't know who else has done that, but the point is, <laughs> <laughs> we have been wary of Ron Wright's our entire board game career. Uh, but when we heard that there was a Imperial Settlers Roll and Write game, we were very intrigued because it combines two things that we like. All right, so how does it work? Let me show you. All right, here's our setup for Imperial Settlers Roll and Write. Every player is going to get one of these pages. This is kind of where we're going to do all of our scoring, filling out of our charts. And then one page of buildings. The buildings over here are gonna give us some special abilities as we fill in those. We're gonna be able to access those buildings. It's gonna give us more and more resources and special abilities, maybe even some points. All right, so we've got four dice. We have three of them that are our resource dices. Dices, dice. <laughs> that are going to be able to give us all the different things we need to fill in those. We also have our pink action dice. Based off of what number this is, it's gonna tell us how many different actions we have to take. We also have these different tiles here. These are these favor tokens. Uh, basically, you're gonna deal out at the beginning of the game, however many there are players plus one. So let's say in a three player game, or we would deal out four of them. So that way everybody gets a chance to have one and a little bit of variety. So let's simulate, let's say a two player game. We'll shuffle them up. We'll put three of them out there. And those are some things that we're gonna be able to gain on our turns. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the dice. Now everyone's gonna work off the same pool of dice. So it looks like we have one of the apples, we have two of the stones, and we're all gonna get four of the actions. All right, then starting with whoever was the first player that round, is gonna take one of these. So let's say we're gonna take the lucky coin. That's gonna be the token we're gonna take. Maybe the next person takes the ally to get an extra action. And the third one, because this is only a two player game, goes unused this round. I'm gonna zoom in on the chart real quick here. Basically what's gonna happen is we have the chance to fill in these different squares in order to fill out these charts. All right, so we started off by having uh, two of the stones. So for an action and a stone, we can fill in one box. At the end of the game, it's worth one victory point as you can see. We've got another stone and we've got another action. We can do the next one as well. Now at the end of the game, we're gonna get two points for that particular row. Now some things like this third row here of the apples, those have multiple actions it's going to take to fill in those particular rows. So we could fill in with one of our apple in one of those boxes, we can fill that in. Now we use three of our resources and we have one action remaining. What we can do is we can fill in a blank box. Let's say over here. We still have our gold coin, uh, which is, it counts as a wild again. Uh, instead of maybe filling that in as a blank spot, perhaps we wanted to fill in another apple or maybe you know another stone or something like that. Now we still have our gold coin, which again, it counts as a wild, you can fill in anything. So instead of filling in a blank spot like we did there, we could have maybe filled in another box of the apples or something like that. Now the top three rows are all about resources, gathering those resources in order to fill out those rows. Now for instance, the more stone, the more wood, and the more food you get, the more actions you use to spend those off, the more points you're going to get. The bottom row, now it doesn't get you nearly as many points, but what it does do is it gives you these various bridges. As you can see, there's four bridges, and each one corresponds to a different bridge on this section. This is where you're gonna be able to do some harvesting. So instead of using an action to spend a resource, you can spend an action to gain a resource. So for instance, we could have used one of our actions to perhaps cross off a wood, another action to cross off of a wood, and then use you know a third action plus those two wood resources that we just gained to cross off that spot, something like that. But in order to have used that spot, we would need to have these first two spots that match that bridge unlocked. Same thing in order to use this middle spot here, these two spots would have needed to be filled in, so on and so forth until you get to the very bottom where you get a ton of resources. This part is very simple. We're just gathering resources and spending them. However, we also have our buildings, which are fantastic. If you fill up all these buildings along the side there, this one takes you, for instance, two actions with no resources and a third action with, along with a wood in order to build a farm. Now, when you build a farm, you're going to be able to gain an apple every turn, which is great. A tool shop, for instance, it, again, it costs two stone plus two actions plus another third action with nothing. This one says each time you harvest, gain one extra resource of that kind. So again, harvesting is where you go from here. So if we pair that with a tool shop, you're gonna get a lot of resources. Each one of these buildings is a different thing for you, kind of gives you some extra abilities, extra, maybe some actions, maybe some gold coins like from the collector. The fortress is gonna give you some victory points. 
Now, if you use the advanced mode, which we recommend, as we kind of will talk about later, there's also the architect's building. The architect's building basically just allows you to shade in spots on your board. Uh, and for every spot you do that does that exact kind of L shape like that, you're gonna get eight points for it. Also, you're able to shade in these shapes like this on your board. And what I mean by that is, as you can see, these dotted spots around the board here. Let's say, uh, let's say we have this filled in and we do this shape right here. Now we have that little kind of small L shape like that and our farm matches that symbol. What we can do is we can change that one to a two. So every time we build one of those shapes on our board, we're gonna be able to up its number to making it even more effective. Again, it's gonna give you more resources based off of those and on those two bottom buildings, even more victory points as well, especially the architect's one. All right, so at the end of the game, we're gonna be 10 rounds. You're gonna count up all your points from the different rows you were working on, as well as the different shapes you spelled, you were using, especially if you're using the advanced uh, rules. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. I like the actions versus resources. Like sometimes you just want all the actions. You can work on that, that area down below to give you the resources you need, but sometimes you need those actions in order to get those resources. And so I like how occasionally every once in a while, if you don't, you know, play to your best ability, uh, you either have like too many resources or too many actions and how you really have to balance what, what you're doing when you're doing that. In this game, when you roll the dice, everyone has access to those dice, right? So how do you differ differentiate what each player is going to be able to do on their turn? Well, they have these favor tokens, these favor tiles that you're going to be able to get. Each one of them does something different, and every time you play on top of that, you get a different assortment of them. So uh, it's really nice to maybe sometimes you get extra action, maybe you get extra resources, maybe how you get the resources changes. And so having those kind of changes the scope of the game a little bit, and it differentiates, gives you some asymmetrical abilities between different players each individual turn. This game did what a lot of roll and rights do in the fact that it was easy to teach, it was easy to learn, and it was fast to play. So I like when a game can encompass that when it comes in like the small package that it is and you just get to play it almost immediately after getting it out of the box because it doesn't take a lot to get to. So this game did do that. The resources that you get are, are are not enough, right? You don't have enough resources or actions to do all the things that you want to do, so you have to be very flexible. But what happens is the bottom section, that harvesting section of your board, gives you extra resources as long as you're kind of building the bridges to get to them. Uh, and that added a lot of flexibility in terms of what resources you're able to use each turn, which I thought made that made that really open-ended as far as how you could build and you can kind of choose your own path, which was really nice. I will say the first time we played this game, though, it fell a little bit flat for us. That we, we were, sure did. We were like really kind of dreading like having to like it play again. it more and more times and have enough <laughs> plays to go through and 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 further review purposes. And you know we just wanted to play a fun game, and it was like oh, that was not enjoyable at all. Okay, but of course because we are diligent and professional, we played it some more. And what we found is there is advanced set of rules that you know you usually don't start with. You know start with the events that are rules, kind of work your way into them. And you get kind of a good game, and then you kind of get into a better game. Well, this game, for us at least, we didn't like it, the base set. But once we added the rever the, you know, the advanced set of rules, which wasn't even that advanced, it became a yeah. really, really fun game. So our recommendation would be just start right away with the advanced mode. Go right there right away. Don't even bother with the base game. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it, was, it was actually clunkier, made less sense. It was slower and it wasn't as fun. Yeah. Um, usually it's like a simplified version that you can you have to add rules to. No, the rules that the advanced mode added made everything more clear and more fun. So I'd say jump right to that if you were playing this game. I have a very fond relationship with Imper Imperial Settlers. I played it the first time at Gen Con, I don't remember what year, 2014 maybe? Something like that. Um, and I had, we had just come from playing a different game where there was just a ton of mansplaining happening. It was very- It wasn't me. <laughs> it was not right. You're, no, you and Matt are both great at that. You guys never do that to me. But it was just like, it was a really frustrating experience. It was actually one of the first times because the two people that I play with most, uh, my husband and my brother, just never do that to me. So it was like one of the first experiences I had of that. And then we go to play, to learn um, Imperial Settlers and the teacher, that guy, 
was incredible. I even made mistakes and he didn't like make me feel like an idiot for making mistakes. So I was just really endeared towards that. He helped me enjoy the game to see what the game was there. And I, I think Matt even bought, did he buy it at he, the convention? I think so. Yeah, it was just, I, I really enjoyed this game. It's a great game. It's a fun game. I, I enjoyed all the aspects of it. And I think because I enjoyed, I enjoyed the game so much, I had too high of expectations for this game. This was, you know, it's a fine roll and write, but it doesn't give me the feeling of Imperial Settlers. It's not like Imperial Settlers light. I kind of just wish that a different theme were attributed to this, because then I think I would actually enjoy it more. But because- This is definitely a building resource game. You could have called this like Agricola roll and write, and it probably would have been more accurate. <laughs> Yeah, no, for real though, that would have like, that would have made so much more sense and then I'd be like, I like this one, but not Agricola. <laughs> That's what, I'd be saying the exact opposite right now. But yeah, I'm just like, I'm, I'm disappointed that I was just expecting something, I was expecting this game to be something that it wasn't, right? And that's, uh, <laughs> that's my Bethany thoughts right now on this. Yeah. A really fun resource <laughs> gathering, roll and write, but it does not have the vibes of Imperial yeah. Settlers at all. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. And I want to know for you, was there ever a game that you loved and a different version of it came out? And what were your thoughts with that? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, you can find us on TikTok. We are Ryan and Bethany. On Facebook, we're Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. And on Twitter, we are Ryan and Bethany 1. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.